morning, everybody. Hey, I got a four by four system of equations. It's four equations, four unknowns. Now it looks, this looks kind of intimidating, but really these problems, they're called Viettas. They're designed to work basically. If anything was off just a little bit, this would be a pain to solve. It turns out you can set this up to where A, B, C, and D are, are zeros of a polynomial. If you can find that polynomial, you'll, you'll know the answers. It's a little bit tedious, but it's, it's fairly manageable. Now, so what I do is actually consider a polynomial in W down here. And notice that I write it as W minus A, W minus B, W minus C, and W minus D. So this clearly has zeros, uh, A, B, C, and D. Now, at this point, we have no idea whether they're real, complex, integer valued. I'm telling you that they're complex valued, although the math would just reveal the answers without you even having to know that. So this is really unnecessary. A lot of people give this information as a convenience. Some think you ought to give it, but the math will reveal the nature of the solution. So but I, I do that just as a courtesy, I guess. But in any event, the hard part, and I left out a lot of the expansion, when you expand this out, when you expand this out, you actually get a, b, a plus b plus c plus d is the coefficient of w cubed. And this takes, that's a lot of work folks to expand that out, but it can be done by hand, very tedious. Um, and, um, and also the coefficient of w squared is, is, is a value that's actually given to us, you see? So you see these things in a way they're designed to work in many regards. In fact, I made this one up just to work out nicely. And then um, also in the same fashion right here, uh, this piece right here is is one of the given pieces of information. See, so uh, if it, again, expanding this out and seeing this is everything, really. Uh, now, one of the things that used to bother me a little bit um, about this is why do you these minus signs? Notice I've tried to color code this with a green minus sign here and a green minus sign here. What's really going on here? If you think about the the binomial expansion, this um, there's four choose one, if you guys are familiar with the binomial coefficients, um, there's four choose one, right, let's go ahead and get that. four choose one, and that is the same as four choose three, by the way. There's a symmetry to these coefficients, so four choose three uh, uh, equals to four choose one, an equal sign right there. And you can think of it like this. How many ways could you pluck three W's out of here? You got four W's up here, right? So you can either pluck them out four choose three or four choose one. Now the four choose one is in keeping with the A's, B's, and C's, and D's. For every time you pick three W's, you have to pick an A, a B, a C, or a D. All right, and so there's four choose one ways to do that, but notice the minus signs are gonna stick because there's a minus in front of each one of the variables, A, B, C, and D, right? So that's why this minus sign is always going to be there, all right, uh, because you're just picking four minus signs. So, so you're adding up four minus negative numbers that the minus sign is going to stay. Now, right over here in a, in, a, in a similar fashion, this is plus necessarily because what you have right here is in a similar fashion, you would have four choose two um, happening in both cases, right? Four choose two is equal to four choose two. But notice that you're picking them in pairs, so you're picking the minus signs in pairs. So technically, this would be like uh, minus a times minus b because you are picking them in pairs. So you see, because of that, uh, minus a times uh, minus b. I should have put that parentheses, folks, but that's supposed to read minus a times minus b. And uh, let me let's see if I can wrap that. Okay. It's minus a uh, times. Oh, that's horrible, isn't it? Uh, look, what what I what I was trying to get across right there. But let me just do this one. Uh, that's really minus a times minus d. So you see, that's why the minus signs cancel out pairwise. And if you you see, this bothered me for a long time. I just kind of memorized the Eddas formula, but they all cancel out pairwise, and that's the minus signs that are necessarily part of the factorization are going to cancel out pairwise. And you get a plus right here. In a similar fashion, if you pick three of them, two of the minus signs will cancel and the other minus sign. So this would be four choose three right here, right? Or four choose one, however you want to think of it. It doesn't really make any difference. Okay, uh, so 
again, you would be picking minus A, minus B, minus C. So two of the minus signs would cancel. And that's why the minus, you have a minus sign that is just retained here. So that's kind of a reason why you have that minus one raised to a power sort of factor included in Vieta's formula. All right, but in any event, once you trust this, okay, we know that this original factorization that we started out is going to be equal to this. And notice that I just took the values that were given um, in the in the original. Like, for example, you know you're going to have, let's see, let me, let me see if we can find a spot here. Um, right, it's, it's going to be minus whatever uh, ABC plus ABD plus ACD plus BCD equals. We see that's given to you as minus 68, right? Okay, and so that's why we actually have a plus 68 right here. Hope you all see that. And that that always used to confuse me until I started thinking of it like this. But uh, again, um, if you trust what I just said earlier, uh, we have a minus sign in front of this entire parenthetical expression, all right? But that parenthetical expression is given to us right here as minus 68, right? So that's why you actually change the signs and you have a plus 68 right there, okay? So that's that's pretty cool, I thought. Now, um, let's see, what else can we talk about? Uh, and so now from the rational zero theorem, and again, I left out some stuff, y'all, two, both two and negative four divide this constant term, all right? And you can actually check that two works right here. If you if you put a two right in here, you would get, uh, you, and you know, it just kind of unravels after that. And then you have to just, maybe you might have to do a long division to get part of it. But this would be 16 minus 32 right here. All right. And y'all, I'm just saying two. I, 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 two is the smallest divisor of 80 I can think of outside of one and one didn't work. So, now, if you put a two right here, this would become what? Minus 40. Our folks right there, if you put a two right there, that's minus 10 times four is 40. Right here, two times there, that would be plus what? One, three, six. I think, yeah. If you put a two in for six, 68 times two, then minus, uh, minus 80. And that does equal to zero. I believe you think so. Yeah, because this part right here would be uh, minus 56. This part right here would be plus 56. So that these numbers here, uh, 16 minus 32 minus 40 plus 136 minus 80 does does equal to zero you see right here. And so that's how you get the ball rolling. And you would discover also you could do another what they call synthetic division. Negative four is also a divisor. Then after that, you end up with a second degree polynomial that has complex zeros. And it has complex zeros. Okay. So, uh, and again, I just, in the name of clutter, it's stuff that, that's done usually in a college algebra class. I, I didn't show you all those steps, but it's it's fairly straightforward, just just kind of kind of tedious to do it. Now, so let's go back and check some of these answers just to see. Uh, let me clear out some of this stuff here. All right. Uh, okay. Now, so we have these solutions here, minus four, two, three plus I, and three minus I. So the easiest one to check would be right up here. Uh, we have this, if you, let's see, I lost my pen here. Um, so right here we have A plus B plus C plus D is equal to four, right? So let's let's check that one. That's the easiest one to check. So uh, so we can, we can pick minus four. Okay, y'all, again, I'm just substituting in A plus B plus C plus D right up here. So minus four plus two, all right? Now you have plus three plus I. All right, and then you have plus three minus I. And y'all, that's where this complex numbers and conjugate pairs uh, comes in right here, you see, Notice these I's are going to cancel out. So you'll get minus four plus two is minus two plus six. So you get minus two uh, plus six equals to the four. So you see, you're, you're pretty confident that all this stuff I was telling you is true down here. So uh, minus two plus six is equal to four, which meets that very first condition, A plus B plus C plus D. Uh, A plus B plus C plus D has to equal to four. 
Now, probably the next easiest one to check is the product. And so let's go ahead and do that off to the side right here. Now, uh, so if we write down the product, we can write down uh, minus four. Okay, times two. All right. And now there's a convenient property of these complex numbers. So what do we have? Three plus I? That's three plus I folks times three minus I. Now the property of, of complex numbers here that you can, you can think of this as the difference of two squares. When you multiply these two guys out, you're going to get three times three. And since this is a difference of two squares, uh, uh, let me write this parenthetically. You can think of this as nine minus I squared. Okay. But y'all remember the property. That's why they call I imaginary. I squared is negative one. So this is actually equal to 10 right here. So what we get is minus four. Uh, times uh, two uh, times 10. Okay. Times 10, but that does equal to negative 80. Okay, so we checked it for two. The rest of the checks work out. That it's just tedious to show it's uh, that's equal to negative 80, just, just like we wanted it, right? It's equal to minus 80. Now, again, obviously it's tedious to multiply them out pairwise, but it can be done. And a lot of stuff cancels out pretty conveniently, so it's not quite as hard as you might think. And then of course, this would be the hardest one to multiply all the triples together, add them up, and, but you would get negative 68. All right, folks, I hope that helped. It, it helped me to actually just do this expansion out rather than trust this, this Vieta's formula. This really is, is what Vieta's formula says, all this stuff. But to me, in a lot of ways, it's kind of hard to remember Vieta's formula. And so if you expand these out, you can just see why Vieta's formula is true. Now, it's not very practical in, in this case. I'll, I'll agree with that. But that is the basis of the, the Vieta's formula. OK, leave any comments if you have any, any uh, questions or, or anything you can uh, to clean up the video a little bit. I know I did leave a little bit of the steps out here, but the major structure of it is present. So hopefully that helped. Thanks.